Hey guys, what's going on? It's Space Cowboy here. Welcome back. Another video for you guys here today. Uh, Denver is on the horizon for this game. Cowboys and Broncos in Arlington. And look, you know, Dallas is just trying to keep pace with the rest of the NFC. And this is going to be a game where they can take advantage of that. Um, I understand it's an AFC game. The Cowboys haven't beaten the Broncos in years to say the least i think the last time they beat him was in 94 95 somewhere around that period i'm just trying to think i don't remember but i know it was in the 90s um but i do think this is the best chance that dallas has to beating denver uh they are in a state of flux right now uh you know you look at what this cowboys team has done they're getting dak prescott back for this game uh, Terrence uh, Steele will be starting at left tackle in place of Tyron Smith from what we're hearing. Uh, and Blake Jarwin is out for this game. Uh, C.D. Lamb will have to wait and see because um, we haven't really heard a whole lot about his uh, game status. Uh, you know, he hurt his ankle in practice. Um, but the thing is, is that the Cowboys have playmakers that can make that up. So that's great. Um, but... You know, uh, I'm looking at Terrence Steele, and I'm, you know, seeing, okay, what can he do at left tackle? Because now, if he can do well, I'm not saying he is, he's definitely not as good as Tyron is, but if he's serviceable and he continues to get better, there's a possibility you have a future guy there long term in terms of a cheap starter. Okay. Um, a couple other things I wanted to mention was, um, you know, uh, Patrick Sertan, you know, you look at Patrick Sertan and you're just like, well, hmm. you know, the Cowboys could have possibly drafted him if it wasn't for the Broncos getting in the way. Um, but it's a good thing because we have Micah Parsons now. And, you know, I understand that many people wanted a corner uh, and we'll see. I I'm really curious to see what uh, Patrick Sertan can do against these uh uh, wide receivers for the Cowboys, so that's going to be great. Let me just get through these uh, injury reports. Uh, uh, you got to go over uh, Garrett Bowles being out. That's a huge thing with, um, you know, the, the offensive line for Denver has been okay. From what I've seen, I didn't really – I'm not acting like an expert here. From what I understand, if we were talking about the Denver team that started – Denver tends to start years off very well. Um you know, they, they tend to do very well to start out a year, and then they kind of sputter um, towards the middle to end of seasons. And it um, looks like the Broncos are on their way to like an 8-9, and 9-8 nine, nine and eight record, or they'll just flop. Um, but no, I, I think you look at this game, and it's a game for the Cowboys to just look. It's not a trap game. It's kind of hard to really look at teams that are over 500 or at 500 being trap games. Trap games are like, okay, a team's like 0-6, or like a team is like, one in seven or something like that. This isn't the case. But uh, another reason with the Broncos being a state in flux is Von Miller's gone. The Cowboys do not have to face Von Miller this weekend. He's been okay this year. I think the Rams making that trade, I don't, there was some rumor that the Cowboys were interested. I don't think so. And even if they were interested, it's kind of like, well, okay, you got the Marcus Lawrence come back. Who cares? Um, not, I understand they don't play the same position, but I just think that you look at this and it's like, well, with Von Miller out of the picture, um, the defense for the Broncos is okay. I mean, they don't get it twisted. Like this Broncos team is solid. It's not bad by any means. They have playmakers, but you know, I don't know. I mean, at this point with Dak Prescott coming back into the fold, we'll see. You know, I'm really curious, like, you look in, Dak Prescott has now been off for what now, um, two weeks going on now, uh, going on a third week, so it's really curious to see if he can, you know, I think he'll be fine, you know, um, that's, it's just going to be one of those storylines to watch, like, how is Dak Prescott, he's going to pick off where he left off, which I think he will, I mean, the fact that that first game of the year after the shoulder thing and stuff like that, um, I think I'll be fine, you know, uh, but, uh, you know, I wouldn't be upset if Cooper Rush started another game, but I don't want Dak missing a whole lot of time. So, uh, not that this game is huge, but, you know, especially even if you lose this game, it's just a, uh, it's an AFC game. So it's not like the end of the world, but for me, I'm looking at this weekend and I'm saying to myself, well, the Dallas Cowboys 
are now the third seed. Uh, if they win, they'll be 7-1. and one. And then you kind of look at the Chiefs and Packers, and you say to yourself, well, if the Packers lose, then Dallas would move up a, a spot in the seeding to number two. And um, then whoever comes out of the NFC, uh, nor- uh, I almost said NFC North, the NFC West is going to remain that one seed until both of them lose more than two games. But for me, look, I preach this every day on this channel that I do a video and especially that the Cowboys are like, you're kind of in that seeding mode. Like, okay, you gotta get, you know, we gotta have this person lose. Look, all you gotta do is just have, just win games and things will fall into your lap, you know? And that's the thing that I'm looking at. Just win games and everything will fall into place. And, you know, um, I, I think that the game that worried me the most was after the bye week, you know, going into the Minnesota and, you know, the Cowboys had, you know, their moments here and there. But I think that as long as Dallas can keep this momentum going, you know, I think it's going to be huge. Especially, um, you know, you got to beat Denver. This is important. You know, you got to keep this up. You got to go in there, take care of business, move on the next week, 1-0. You know, Dallas has to keep this machine rolling. They can't keep, uh, you know, I'm not saying they're doing this, but they just can't lose ground. And I think that Dak coming back, he'll be fine. Um you know, the last time we played Denver was that in, in Dallas was that shootout uh, with Tony Romo and uh, Peyton Manning. Man, that was years ago now. Um, I think that's now eight years ago. Is it about eight years ago now? That's that's pretty wow, <laughs> pretty far away now. Uh, but now I I think you look at this Cowboys squad. They have an elite offense. I think that they have the depth to get things done, and I think that. You know, I believe there was a stat that said like the Cowboys had the most like player like thirty one players um you know play and like thirty one players on offense play something like that and it was the most in the NFL and they're doing very well. Um, but in terms of uh, other things to expect, I think that the defense continues to play well. I think that um, you know look. The Cowboys are, you know, they're still getting better as a unit. Like, they're playing well, and they're continuously getting better. I think that what's important is that as the Cowboys continue to stack wins, if they can continue, you know, if they can continue to do that, and the defense continues to get better, this team's going to be hard to stop, especially if they, I understand that it's a hot start for the season, but they need to keep winning. They need to keep this thing going because, um, you know, you can't afford to start slipping at the wrong time. And I think that, look, it's Dallas's division to lose still. They're up three and a half games, I believe, at this point. Um, so I know Philly plays the Chargers. Uh, I, be- I I think Washington... Someone plays the Bucks. I think the Giants play the Bucks. Um, I think Washington's on a bye week. So um, with all that being said, and, um, you know, you look at this, it's like, look, Dallas takes care of... If they take... If they do their part, Four and a half, four and four and a half games up. There's a realistic possibility that we're talking about NFC East champs by Thanksgiving, or even the week after Thanksgiving. But the, the division's so bad, like you can, you know, it's possible. I mean, there have been teams that even in a 16 game schedule um, have clinched the. I think the Eagles back in 2004 clinched the division after week 12. It's like, <laughs> like holy crap. But that doesn't mean anything. Listen, we we're we're zero and zero. Go into this week, get that win. One and one, you know. Love the mentality of this team. So let's keep it rolling, guys. Uh, so I'll catch you guys in the next one. Have a great rest of your day. Bye, bye, guys.